Okay, hope you all are able to see my screen. Hey, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, today we are going to discuss about interest rates, uh, especially what is the correlation between uh, bond market and the stock markets um, and also the yields, right? Uh, before going into the session, um, thank you uh, everyone joining this evening. Um, uh, we will be doing uh, as an amazing group in Discord and our group is uh, continuously growing uh, more than 3,200 people. Thank you for uh, bringing in all of your friends. Uh, we'll continue to expand in the similar fashion. Uh, so little bit of disclaimer, I am not a financial expert. Uh, don't advise you to invest in the market. Uh, any losses that you may incur, um, uh, it's not my res responsibility. This video is completely for education purposes. Uh, if you want to invest in the stock, um, stock or anything referred in this video, uh, please check with your financial expert before investing. Okay, we will move on. So today we are going to talk about interest rate. Uh, so interest rate have various factors. Uh, basically, uh, uh, so uh, these days we are hearing right when, uh, whenever the interest rate increases, the markets are going down. Uh, so many of the uh, people who trade in the markets, uh, they might not have an idea like what's happening, uh, why the stocks are crazing, especially the tech stocks. Uh, you, you might think uh, there is no clue or like uh, something is crashing, right? So that's where um, I thought of putting, putting together as well as uh, some of you were interested in this, uh, knowing how this is impacting the stocks, right? Uh, so a little bit of nuances, interest rate is the cost of borrowing money, right? We all know that how if the interest rate is low, you can borrow more money. If the interest rate is high, you are going to decrease your borrowing. Um, interest rate provides a compensation of bearing the risk, how the economy uh, is risk uh, at what level, right? It's, ba it's basically supply and demand of the credit. Uh, so uh, over the past 20, 30 years, uh, the interest rate situations are completely changed because the Fed influences the rate uh, through open market transaction. By buying the bonds, um, uh, they can keep the interest rate low. Um, by buying the securities, they can keep the interest rate low. Uh, or by selling it, they can um, raise the interest rate, something like that, right? Uh, so over the period, uh, so, U.S. Fed is uh, playing a biggest role. Um, this type of interest rate um, scenarios came in 1980s, 1990s, uh, even um, uh, during 2000. So whenever there is a asset bubble, uh, that's when the talk comes, the interest rate comes. Uh, the largely interest rate discussions are very highly occurring uh, post the 2009 subprime mortgage crisis, right? Uh, so when interest rate decreases, so whenever the government buys more securities, uh, banks are injected with more money they can use for lending and then the interest rate decreases, right? Uh, so it's uh, how government reacts with the buying and selling. If government sells the security, <clears throat> then uh, they try to increase the interest rate, uh, then Few, fewer funds are available at the bank. Uh, so basically, which in turn increases the interest rate for uh, lending. Uh, in fact, it forcing a interest rate rise. Uh, right now, if you see Fed is buying every day some 80 billion or something uh, worth of uh, uh, securities in the markets. So that's the reason they are, even in the corona economy, uh, the markets are continuously fueling with more money. Uh, it's uh, very interesting to see uh, how Fed is uh, like continuously injecting um, money over the past uh, uh, one and a half years. In fact, uh, there is an estimate saying 39% um, of US dollar uh, created during this corona economy. That means uh, 
uh, whatever the rolling dollar amount, what we are seeing in the economy, uh, 61% was created until pre-corona uh, markets over the past uh, um, uh, 40, 50 years or so. And then in last one year, 39% of the dollar was created um, to inject the fuel the economy, right? Uh, so the uh, two scenarios when interest rate goes up and down. So now let's go in much deeper, right? Uh, how commodities, bonds, stocks, and currencies uh, react with each other, right? Uh, this is very interesting theory. Um, uh, so uh, some of you would have, would have went to the uh, US MBA, you could have seen this uh, frequently. This is a big subject when it comes to um, uh, uh, securities, you know. Uh, the commodities, bonds, and stocks, and currencies all are correlated. Uh, when, uh, whenever there is a commodity uh, price rise, the cost of goods moves upward, then there is a price action, which is inflationary, right? Uh, whenever there is a inflation uh, comes up, that's what uh, that's when the interest rates rises. So recently, Powell said in the uh, recent meeting, there is a chance inflation to can go up, right? Uh, that's when uh, suddenly the interest rate uh, pop happened, then the market crash happened. Uh, so the growing inflation uh, can rise the interest rate. As a result, bond prices falls. Whenever the bond prices falls, there is an inverse relationship between interest rate and bond prices. If you see, whenever the interest rate goes up, bond prices goes down. Uh, so the below table represents, you see that, uh, the, what are the different correlations? Even currency has an impact on all markets. Whenever the US dollar goes up, then the commodity prices goes down. Uh, then the bond prices goes up and stocks goes up. Uh, likewise, whenever the currency goes down, commodity price goes up, then bond prices and stock prices go, both goes down. In this, in this scenario, the interest rate goes up. Uh, like I said in the previous uh, slide, whenever the interest rate goes up, there is less money available for the banks to lend the scenario. Basically, the idea is uh, all the corporations, the companies which runs through several bonds, uh, they would not have more money to run the company. So that's why the stock, the assumption is the stocks will go down. Uh, larger, even larger corporation, they issue bonds for uh, 2025, bonds for 2030. So whenever the interest rate goes up, then the, uh, the attractiveness goes. Basically, uh, the cost of running business goes high, right? Uh, whenever the cost of running, uh, running a business goes high, uh, uh, you can see that actually the company is going to generate lesser revenue, right? Um, uh, sorry, lesser uh, earnings, the profits. Even if they rate, um, generate more revenue, they have to pay more interest rate over the period. So it tends to fall, right? Uh, currency has an impact on all markets, but the main one to focus is commodity prices. Commodity prices are the common main use, right? All of the commodities. Uh, which affects bonds and stocks again. Uh, so if you see uh, US dollar and commodity prices, generally opposite direction, this, this two, uh, inverse relation again, uh, how the interest rate and the stock market, right? Uh, the same thing, uh, same way, opposite direction. As the dollar declines related to other currencies, the reaction can be seen in commodity prices, right? Uh, so let me move on. So uh, as I mentioned, the bond prices and stocks. Bond prices and stocks are generally correlated to one another. When bond prices begin to fall, the stock will eventually follow uh, to go down as well. Uh, because borrowing becomes more expensive. That means uh, by issuing the bond and getting the cash because, the, because of the interest rate increase, uh, the companies, as I mentioned, they have to pay more interest to get the same money. For example, let's say Apple Apple issues the bonds, right? For I, I think recently they issued 500 billion or something uh, for uh, 2025 or 2030. Uh, so those bonds, uh, if they issued after the interest rate increases, 
they they might need to pay more interest for the same money right uh, so now they have to generate that much um, earnings to overcome the bond interest rate so so this is the correlation you could see whenever the interest rate goes up that's when the stock market and bond market both goes down right uh, so uh, the current scenario how it is going to impact on all our uh, positions right that's the question many of you might have um so let's see this um, so how we ended up with this so there are history of bubbles right asset bubble happens all the time uh, so uh, yeah, dutch tulip bulb mania in 1630 south sea company great britain in 1720 the railroad bubble in united states on 1840s uh, all these are biggest bubbles right um, in 1980 there is a japanese uh, stocks and real estate bubble and we had uh, another bubble like uh, 2000 technology stocks and uh, dot com bubble then the real estate bubble in 2005 uh, to 9 uh, mid 2000s right 5 uh, to 7 or 8 so the, the history bubbles keep happening uh, but that's when uh, the government regulation comes into picture and then they try to um, avoid uh, how Uh, certain scenarios can be overcome so right now all, all of us has a question whether the bond market is in bubble everybody talks about bond market is bubble even uh, uh, our uh, kathy and uh, many uh, billionaire investors they are all <clears throat> shouting about bond market is in big, biggest bubble you know this is how i think whenever everyone says bubble 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 right this was they keep saying since 2013 you see here the financial media has continued to forecast us bond market as the next great asset bubble since 2013 uh, usually bond market bubble uh, it takes uh, a decade or a, even two decades uh, to certify that uh, until then so because price action on the bond market is slow right it is not going to happen like oh today 1000 points up tomorrow 2000 points up those kind of things might not happen uh, in history it happened like 157 basis points uh, once in 1980 and then once in 1997 or so something like that right uh, those things might not occur always uh, so basically this is how i feel even though they talk about bubble we, we might not be realizing that bubble is uh, happening right uh, and also the impact on the bubble is very minimal that's how i feel uh, so the reason the key reason for this bubble is fed is keep stimulating the economy right this is happening since uh, post uh, subprime crisis fed is keep injecting more and more money into the economy and buying securities and also uh, keeping the interest rate at uh, historic low uh, that's uh, the reason the bond market is going into the bubble territory uh, whenever the economy recovers so you are going to see that basically uh, even now when we open the reopen the economy all the businesses are opened you are going to see that the interest rate raising again fed is going to sell the securities because they are going to see the higher price uh, movement they are uh, trying to balance the balance sheet right uh, when this happens then uh, what is happening is the downward pressures on the yield is removed right the yield will rise back so the bubble will not happen immediately that's what i am trying to say uh, so if somebody says oh the bubble is happening now um, uh, something like that we don't need to worry um, i don't think there is a interest rate situation where uh, the yields uh, 10 year yields rise uh, like 3 um, 3 uh, uh, points right uh, uh, that doesn't going to happen right Uh, even two points uh, it would take some time slow and steady that doesn't go going to happen in a, uh, what is that in a short period basically in a month or so something like that if it happens in a month what is going to happen to the stock market it is going to crash like anything 35% 40% crash that's uh, that the what, that's what we saw in uh, 2000 dot com bubble or uh, uh, subprime crisis uh, so 
at this point we are not at that bad situation i see corporations are performing continuously better and better and uh, uh, they they are like uh, uh, producing very good results so with this kind of results i don't expect uh, like 35% correction crash or something going to happen even the uh, february cor cor correction uh, if we see the 10 to 12% correction impacted only tech stocks because which is huge hugely uh, valued right the market caps on technology stocks are very very high so they try to control the uh, um, i mean uh, when the when the interest rate jumped what happens is eventually uh, investors moved from it's like algorithms right uh, basically algorithms were uh, these days trade a lot uh, so when this kind of news comes up algos what happens it switches the track so where there is more profit it moves the investment over there so even some of the institutional funds automatically take the funds from technology stocks and move it to bond market that's what happened right uh, so um, this is like naturally i mean it's these are like uh, naturally going to happen continuously but well, algorithms it's going to decide back again what's going to happen is uh, when the uh, interest rate is going to fall down for a, a two three days once it reaches the uh, potential moment or potential height then it is going to switch the in investments to technology stocks then again you are going to see the technology stocks booming uh, so this is continuously going to happen back and forth uh, over the next 2 3 years you, we are going to see that the fluctuation but overall i feel like the 2021 the market is going to be positive overall at least 15% the snp would return if you see the snp uh, and the industrial dow industrial both are at historic high compared to nasdaq nasdaq is only technology stocks right if you see snp the mix of all of the companies which has performed well and snp is almost near to year high right um, so right now uh, 3900 points uh, so i expect at least 15 20% like 4400 4500 points by end of this year uh, so uh, the by rising interest rate also it's going to slow down or little bit lower down uh, over the, this summer that is going to happen it's not going to continue to rise um, for example if it rises then it's a big alarm um, i don't expect it it, it will rise over the period basically even if the economy opens it's, a, it's going to raise over the period like two years three years something like that uh, you don't even realize that the rise is going to happen something like that uh, so the bond yield dropped below 2% whenever it dropped right uh, to come back it ha it haven't happened even in japan if you see the last point that's what i quoted if if you see japan experienced the bond uh, yield dropping below 2% uh, it's occurred in 1997 and then it haven't regained that level since then right now the bond yield is around 1.75% i don't think it is going to cross 2% at all it is not going to happen in uh, at least a decade or uh, at least 5 years uh, that's how i see until 2028 we are in a bullish market okay uh, so uh, for the question is bond market is in bubble yes it's in a bubble but slowest bubble so it's like uh, now uh, uh, feds and uh, especially us government and fed involvement they know what they are doing right so they know uh, um, how to sustain the economy how to make the economy to move into the better position um, something like that right so they always try to uh, influence with the right path so i don't think uh, uh, no one is going to allow uh, to a bigger crash or something like that right uh, so the impact on near future none are minor so that's how i see uh, so if you are afraid of uh, the bond yields rising and afraid of uh, um, or doing business then it, it's uh, it's nothing basically uh, it's all temporary uh, so what i would recommend is invest in long term stocks which will save you from any market impacts um, basically when you a uh, lot of uh, retail investors started trading on the volatility uh, so the three things I always say to our team, uh, 
uh, our uh, entire discord team <clears throat> so never play shorting your stock right something all we have learned from gme uh, never play with your put option uh, never play a, a bix uh, because these are like created for hedges so if you stay in long term stocks you are going to continue to uh, gain more and more uh, so with this i'll take a pause uh, uh, if you guys have any questions we can uh, discuss four five questions then we'll, um, we can stop recording and move on if you have any questions related to interest rate or bonds uh, feel free to ask yeah hello yes uh, this is rajesh uh, i kept my 401k 5% Hey, I, Rajesh, I um, lost your question, basically. Hello? 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 Hey, Rajesh. Are you able to hear me? Okay, since uh, I lost Rajesh, uh, uh, he had uh, some question. Hello? Okay, at this point, I'll stop the recording. Uh, we can continue to 